Good morning and welcome to the Kellick & Co Market Update. This week we've seen increasing amounts of talk of a no-deal Brexit and that's been fuelled by Boris Johnson's pledge to leave the EU on the 31st of October no matter what. All this talk of a no-deal Brexit has had a negative impact on the value of sterling and as of today £1 will buy you just $1.21. Here's the chart showing the value of sterling against the dollar over the last five years and you can see that at the moment sterling is at the lowest it's been within the last five years. So on the plus side if you have got a portfolio that's invested quite heavily in overseas assets because that portfolio will be valued in sterling you probably have seen a rise in value over the last week because of that devaluation of sterling now at the moment it's actually quite difficult to place a value on the true probability of a no deal brexit so last week we mentioned that goldman sachs had put the probability at 20 percent this week jp morgan has said they see the probability as being at 25 percent if you look at some of the main gambling sites and you have a look at the odds on there, those odds imply that the probability of a no-deal Brexit is closer to 40%. And what we've also done is have a look to see how people are trading the bond markets in the UK. Because at the moment, the bond markets are implying that investors expect an interest rate cut to happen in the UK. Now, the Bank of England has said that if we do get a no-deal Brexit, an interest rate cut is very likely to happen. And therefore, the fact that investors are pricing in an interest rate cut does imply that a lot of investors are expecting a no-deal Brexit. So lots of different points of view here. And all we can really do for the time being is wait for further commentary from Boris Johnson. And over in the US, we've had two bits of news this week that have caused the markets to sell off. Uh, so first of all, we had an interest rate cut of 0.25% in the US on Wednesday this week. Now, normally an interest rate cut would cause markets to rise. And the reason that markets fell after this rate cut was because of the commentary that came alongside it. Now, investors had been expecting a rate cut to happen this week, and they had been hoping for further rate cuts over the coming months. However, the commentary that came alongside this week's rate cut does imply that the Federal Reserve does not want to cut rates that much further. Here's the key comment that was made by Jerome Powell this week. He said, let me be clear, it's not the beginning of a long series of rate cuts. So that comment actually caused a sell-off in US markets this week. The second piece of news that has caused a sell-off in markets over in the US was Donald Trump's announcement last night that he will be imposing 10% tariffs on a further $300 billion worth of goods and services coming into the US from China. Now, if that goes ahead on the 1st of September, as announced last night, that will mean there will be tariffs on virtually all goods and services coming to the US from China. And the fact that this was, announcement was made last night does imply that trade negotiations between the US and China are not going as well as one would have hoped. So we did see a sell-off in US markets yesterday, and that has continued this morning into other global markets around the world. So another situation we need to keep an eye on, but it could be that some buying opportunities will appear within global markets over the next couple of weeks. And finally this week, we've had some bad news from Centrica, the owner of British Gas, who have announced they will be cutting their dividend by 58%. Now we did look at Centrica a couple of weeks ago here on this podcast and we did point out that the dividend was very high at 9% and that it was not very easy for the company to afford that dividend. So it's of not a huge surprise that the dividend has been cut by such a high amount. Obviously the share price has sold off quite heavily following this news and that means that over the last five years the share price of Centrica has fallen by 75%. Here you can see the chart. As you can see it has continued to fall consistently over the last five years. And for us this just highlights the danger of investing in companies purely because they have a high dividend. So we would recommend that you have a look at your portfolio. Any companies that do have very high dividends, we would recommend that you have a look and try and think about how easily the companies can afford those dividends. Now moving along to the week ahead, we've got results coming up from a couple of the big German companies and we've got results from Deutsche Telekom and also from E.ON and we've got results coming up from Danish wind farm company Orsted. That's it from us. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday.